Good morning. Oh, it's late again. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Coffee Talk. Uh, Marina, no, I will not get the dog a new bed. That's not how life works in this house. Um, he has another bed because he already had two. Uh, and last night, I let him sleep on it out in the living room. But no, you don't get another $135 bed to sleep in my room. No. That's a negative. Um, uh, so, good morning. Welcome to Coffee Talk. Happy Halloween. Um, for those of you who know me well, you know that today is the day that my father died. Um, I, <clears throat> it's been 24 years since my father died and, um, it's still surreal to me. It's still surreal to me that my dad my father died. It still almost doesn't feel real. I have now lived, uh, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24. I have now lived seven years longer without him than I did with him. Um, and I struggled to remember his voice. I have it on video though. I posted it on my Instagram page this morning. Um, but it is still surreal to me still blows my mind that my dad died. <laughs> oh, Barbara, we have the same dad, dead dad day. Um, it's just surreal. Anyway, um, so typically I do a big Halloween party, as you got most of you know, but my house is under construction, so we are not doing the Halloween party this year, so it all feels kind of sad. Uh, you know, I do those Halloween parties more for me than anyone else, but I'm not going to lie. It just kind of feels... Uh, um, thank you, Joyelle, for posting my Instagram handle. For those of you that want to hear my dad's very thick Jay-Z Brooklyn accent, you can go to my Instagram page and hear it. Um, okay, so I wanted to tell you a story about infidelity. There are a lot of people who say, and we've talked about this before, like if my significant other cheated, I, it would be over. Just over. That's it. No ifs, ands, or buts. I would not, no discussion. I, you know, I, I we could never forgive. And I think a lot of times it's easy to say that until you are in that situation. Because until you are actually faced with ending your marriage and and breaking up your home and going through a divorce and blah, 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 blah. Till that is your decision, until you have to go through that, that follow through, that execution, um, it's easy to say um, that, you you know, infidelity, I'm, it's over. But I was reading about this couple who got, who, oh, the dog with the bone. Sparrow, is there anything else you can chew on or play with? I'm so sorry, guys. It's If it's not my kids, it's my dog. Um, so I was reading about this couple, and he had an affair. And she was, rightly so, devastated. And supposedly blindsided, right? Didn't see it coming, couldn't believe it, had no idea where it came from, right? When she first found out about it. But I was reading their story and through couples counseling, I was really listening to their truth. Now this is a level of truth that not everybody is going to be comfortable with. So just listen to what I'm saying. Okay. Um, the counselor said that Infidelity in marriage typically comes down to fear. What it, and ask each one, what is your greatest fear in this marriage? So her husband, who had the affair, said, well, before me, 
she was with this star football player. And I guess there's part of me that believes she deserves better than me. And the counselor asked her, what is your greatest fear in this marriage? And she said, his colleagues and the men and women he works with are so smart and knowledgeable about what he does for a living. And I don't know anything about it. So I feel inferior. In turn, I don't want to go do things with him and work. So what they ended up admitting was that whenever he would have a work event, she would find other things to do. She would say, oh, babe, just go. I'll clean the house. I'll get dinner ready. I'll do food shopping. I'll whatever. And just go by yourself. He thought she didn't value his contribution. She, he thought she didn't care about his job. She, he thought she didn't think what he did was important. Really, she felt inferior. She didn't feel smart enough to hang out with him and his colleagues. So the, the lack of communication led to him believing that his wife thought what he did was insignificant. He would then start going to all of these work functions and these conferences away alone, believing that his wife didn't value any of it. He then found another woman who did, who thought he hung the moon, who thought he was so smart, who thought his writing was amazing, who was on all the, at all the same conferences as him, right? So, <clears throat> he started to believe that the reason that his wife didn't value his contribution was because it wasn't as significant as the football player that she had dated before him. Instead of going to her and saying, this is how I feel, because men almost can never do that, he found another woman to make him feel good. The more he was away, the more she felt he wanted to be with people smarter than her. The more she didn't come, the more he felt she didn't value his contribution. They did this dance where they separated. And in their minds, they justified the time they spent apart, right? He ended up having an affair. She was devastated, but through counseling, they were able to understand what was missing and what was happening, what breakdown was happening <clears throat> in their marriage. And she was able to admit that yes, she was willingly and intentionally avoiding doing important things that mattered to her husband with her husband. And here is the fact, Jack. We would love to think that we should be able to send our spouse out into the world over and over and over and over again alone. And that they should read our minds that, yes, no, I value you. I think you're incredibly smart, but I feel inferior, so I don't want to be there. That they should get all of that when we say, no, I don't want to go. You just, just go alone. Truly, men are not mind readers. And I don't want to say that it's anybody's fault that anybody had an affair, but the amount of truth that is able to come out in counseling. The amount of truth that Michael and I were able to, okay, Sparrow, stop, sit, 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 stay, stay, stay. No, um, the amount of truth that, okay, sit, lay down, guys, guys, Please think about other people right now who are going through this. When you say things like, no, cheating is bullshit, and 
If they do it once, they'll do it again. Please think about the other people, men and women who are here trying to keep their lives together. I know so many people, including myself, whose marriage was at the brink of ending, who were able to save it. So we cannot say that marriage cannot be saved. And you cannot say that it will never be the same because for some people it's better. And I will tell you that I, I just want you guys to remember that I understand we each have our, our personal view on infidelity or betrayal. Believe me, I understand. Um, but I think that finding a good counselor and having two people who are truly willing to, un to admit their fears and where they where they stopped trying as a partner could be the most healthy, amazing thing that you can do in a marriage. And by the way, to anybody right now who is feeling that way, who is feeling like you are drowning and that you are tasked with saving a marriage that you don't believe can be saved. No, Gina, it applies to any relationship you are trying to keep together. <laughs> I want you to know that I sat in this very chair. I sat in this very chair and I looked across this room at a man who was utterly broken, who ha whose actions and behavior had broken me. And I said, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. And he said, okay. And when he came back to me and said, Will you please go to counseling with me? No, Denise, you did not make your ex cheat. That is not what I'm saying. Guys, please, please, please. Nobody makes their ex or their significant other do anything. What I'm talking about is what sometimes, not always, we are able to do in counseling is understand where the breakdown happened. What was my role in the breakdown of my marriage? Did I have one? And if I did, what was it? It is very hard to own our own shit. Very hard, especially when the infraction against us is so blatant and such bullshit. It is so easy to turn around and go, nope, you, 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 you did this. You broke us. It was your infidelity. It was your actions. You. It's very easy to do this from this chair. You, 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 you. What is not easy, what is hard as shit, is going into a counselor's office and going, Yeah, I may have lost interest. I may have inadvertently made him feel that what was going on in his life, you know, I stayed busy. I was busy. I was taking care of kids. I was working. I was 
keeping the house going, you know? I didn't need to go on trips and I didn't need to go with him to dinners because I would be here when he got home. Wasn't that enough? Wasn't that enough? And it turns out in my marriage, it wasn't. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to just say, I love you at the end of the day. It wasn't enough to go through the motions. We as a couple needed certain things that we were not giving to each other. And that is just the truth about us. And I share these stories with you only because it may help one person. It may not help you you necessarily, but it may help her or her or him. Coffee talk won't help you every day. Some days it'll have nothing to do with you. But it may help somebody you're, you talk to in your life. You may say, oh my God, I just heard this on Coffee Talk this morning. We just had this conversation. Counseling doesn't work for everybody. And in marriage, there are no easy answers. That I can tell you. Sometimes the choice is only to leave. But sometimes the choice can be to stay. That's all I'm saying. And that sometimes honesty is so hard. Sometimes it's easier to cheat than it is to be honest. Holy shit, but that is true. Sometimes it is just easier to cheat than put the work in. Because it is exhausting being honest and working and showing up every day and giving 100% when you can just go through the motions. Oh, that's a lot for a Halloween. That's a lot for a Halloween. I'm not going to lie. Because I'm telling you, I, my eyes are wet. What's going on here? Uh, I would like to say one last thing, and this is really important, so I hope you're still listening. I am not talking about chronic cheaters. I am not talking about people who cheat and get caught and say they're sorry and then cheat again. I am not talking about husbands or wives who lie, then get caught, who lie again, who get caught, who lie again. That, if you think that's what I'm talking about, you're, you don't know me at all. That is not what I'm talking about. Trust that. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you're brave, share this video. I know this is a tough one to share, but if you're brave, share this video. There's a share button right there. I love you guys so much today. Have a great, great day. Berthan, Berthan, Berthanada, I am praying for you. I'm praying for everybody. That's all I do is pray for you guys. I will never stop praying for you. I love you so much today. Have a great, great day.